Hey guys, Mr. Osborne and Mr. Stair, Mr. Stair. <laughs> Mr. Stair here. Uh, this is our second degree uh, form seminar. Uh, just like the first degree one yesterday, we are going to be going over uh, a lot of the basic moves. Um, we're going over the first half of the form today. Next week will be the second half of the form, so make sure that y'all stay tuned in for that. Um, we're going to be going over all of the basic kicks um, first, or I say basic, all of the kicks from the first half first, and then we'll be going over uh, and combing through the form uh, line by line and talking about some, some uh, technical things. How many people? Six. We have six people, Mr. Sister. Woo! Again, if you're here and you're uh, you know, learning and participating with us, uh, please make sure that you comment your name, name down below. Uh, so that Senior Master Sister Stare knows you're here. She's behind the camera. So if any second degrees aren't here and they don't comment down below, she's going to know. And y'all are going to get in trouble. Yeah. So there you go. Yeah. Solid. So uh, the very first kick that we're going to go over in the second degree form is the axe kick, okay? Um, now the axe kick portion of this is not very difficult, uh, but one thing that y'all have to realize is you do need to have some amount of flexibility. If you are not a flexible person, uh, start stretching. There's no other thing I can say for that other than you need to stretch. If your ax kick is down low at your belt level, that's not gonna fly. You really have to make sure you stretch for this ax kick. So, um, is that the first kick? You're looking at me weird. No, no, that's right. <laughs> it was like, is that the first? God. So, um, yeah, so the very first kick we're gonna go over, uh, you can do it on your left and right side. And again, the ax kick, y'all have done it before, it's nothing weird. It's just a nice back leg axe kick. Now when you do this, uh, a lot of students have trouble controlling it after the axe kick. So when you do your axe kick, boom, all it does is hover, as I'm falling over, all it does is hover on the ground a little bit, and then you land forward into your front stance. Um, two big mistakes that I see students make is number one, they'll either swing their axe kick backwards, then they'll land in front, don't do that. And then number two, oh my goodness, please don't do this, is you do your axe kick and you land immediately into the front stance. Here, also don't do that. Again, we're hovering our leg right beside the, our base leg, then we're putting it down in front. So again, it's a back leg axe, hover, land in front. And again, you wanna have that control. So same thing on the other leg, you lift it up, hover, and land, boom land. Okay. Again, one big thing that we talk about on the axe kick a whole lot, especially in class when we're doing it, is I want to make sure that you don't have a bent over back. So when you're doing the axe kick, it's not this. Right? Bending over your back does not make the kick easier. It does not make it stronger. It does not make it higher. It is wrong technique, so don't do it. So when you're doing it, you want to make sure your back is absolutely straight as you do your ass kick and then fall over and then land. I don't have a good balance today. So, um, that's the axe kick. I highly suggest you'll practice those. If your axe kick is not where it needs to be, hike wise, please start stretching second degrees. That's a big thing. If I'm a judge at a tournament and you're doing the second degree form and you do an axe kick this high, it's not good. You wanna make sure that axe kick uh, gets all the way up there, okay? Great. Uh, so the very next kick is the inside crescent kick, hook kick, round kick, right? Yes, sir. Okay. <laughs> uh, so Mr. Sarah is going to go over that one a little bit, okay? Thirteen now. Sorry. Thirteen now. Thirteen. Second degree. Is Elizabeth Lee here? She is not. <gasps> All right. Cool. So for this kick, what I'll, the biggest thing on the control C on the reverse hook kick round kick is over rotate. So what a lot of people do on this hook kick round kick is they spin too fast and they open, open their hips up too much and then it just looks really sloppy. So you have to really have to think about not over rotating right here. Um, so once we're right here, we should be in a back stance and a double knife down in front, lock hands up. We, we still need to pivot on this inside crescent kick. We come up, kind of like we do on the axe kick, hover just a little bit. Don't just here and then drop it down. It's crescent kick, hover a little bit, turn, hook kick, Knee is at my target, round kick, put it down. Okay, so not over rotating. That's probably the biggest thing. Let's do it uh, two more times. Put your hands up, pivot. Inside press, cover. 
turn, spot my target, chamber, hook kick, round kick, and then land on back. Let's do that one more time. So here, hands up, pivot, inside crescent kick, look, hook kick, round, and land. And don't fall into it, you land soft. There you go. Uh, one small thing on the inside crescent kick, not the hook at ground kick, he's talked about that perfectly, is again a big mistake that I see second degrees make in this form is on that inside crescent kick. When you land that kick, you have to land in front. Mr. Sister did exactly what you're supposed to do, but a lot of second degrees, they'll go here, they'll go inside crescent, and they're already halfway turned around before they do that hook kick ground kick. That is not it. Make sure, which side did I do? I already grabbed. When you're here, you do your inside crescent and you land in front. Pop, here. Then you turn and you do that nice hook kick ground kick, okay? So that inside crescent lands in front, okay? So now we're gonna talk about the uh, two probably most basic kicks in the form, uh, the front kick, side kick combination. These kicks you learned at white belt. You should be very good at them. So please practice them. I know they're simple kicks. And you're like, oh yeah, the front kick, side kick, I know that. You have to still practice them, okay? So um, if you're practicing them at home, remember whichever leg is about to do both kicks, that leg, that leg goes in back in your X stance, okay? So I'm here, I just did my downward knife hand strike. Hands come up, back leg is gonna pick up and you nice snappy and sticky front kick. Then you put it down right behind you. When you put it down, if you notice, I put it down with my toes facing forwards. Then when I step back, these legs will pivot. So I step back and I pivot, I turn my hips over and I get ready for that side kick. So again, I do my front kick, wham! I put it down, toes are facing forwards. As I step back, I pivot my toes here and I pick up that leg and I do my nice sticky side kick. Again, the pivoting is a big part of it. When you do your side kick, part of your power comes from that rotation and the snap of your hips. You have to make sure you have that, oh, it's weird, without a side kick. <laughs> you have to have that snap of your side kick if you're gonna get some power. Um, a long time ago, and I forgot who did it, uh, but it was at a black belt testing. A long, long time ago, I was like a first degree. And um, I really wish I could remember the instructor, but it was at a black belt testing and they got, I think, a blue board out. And the instructor came up and barely bent their knee and they twisted their hips and they broke the board. There you go. Um, but it was awesome and it just shows you the power that comes from those hips. And uh, it really, really stuck with me because those side kicks are awesome. So when you do that, I'm gonna go ahead and face sideways for this one. After you do your front kick again, put it down, toes facing forwards. As you step back, you pivot over with these toes you pick it up and you rotate those hips into that side kick. Really drill it in there and jam it. Um, now, with the side kick, you wanna make sure, like I just did, I just put it down right away. Don't practice like that. Just like we did with the inside crescent hook kick ground kick, just like we did with the ax kick, you also have to practice the stance afterwards. Don't practice just the kick. So after you do that side kick, wham, you wanna practice landing into that nice middle stance, okay? So again, let's do both of the kicks. Whichever leg is kicking, put it behind you in that X stance. Here, hands come up, pick up that leg, front kick. Put it back behind you, toes facing forwards. Pivot, follow. Pick up that leg and drill it in and land in that nice middle stance. There you go. Okay, so I know this next kick is not in the first half, but we're gonna go ahead and go over it with Mr. Sister, and it is our butterfly kick. Oh, I'm sorry, triple ramp. Oh, <laughs> that is in the first half. We'll still do butterfly too, but let's go over the triple round real quick, and he's gonna give you some tips and things to remember as you're practicing your triple round at home. Yes, sir. Um, I'm gonna face this way like it is in the form, okay? So remember on this kick, the most important, one of the most important parts is pivot. If you don't pivot, you're gonna pike, and you're just gonna be slinging your leg. So you have to make sure the whole time you're constantly pivoting your foot through your kicks. So this is right after our whole line, step back, side kick. One, two. Okay, so we should start with that. Hands up, pivot. Chamber, one leg in my target, ground kick, one. 
pivot, like I said, or point our target at our knee, point our knee at our target, two, pivot, turn, kick, three, and then we land your arm, okay? So like I said, pivot, point your knee at your target. Ready? So pivot, chamber, one, two, three, okay? Now what a lot of people do, they think they can kick higher than they should, so they end up doing this. Sling in your leg. Don't kick higher than you can because then it just looks sloppy. It's okay if you can kick down here, but it needs to look good with a good chamber, free chamber. If you're kicking up high, if you chamber here and you re chamber down here, you're probably kicking too high. You need to make sure knee stays in the same spot. Okay, let's do it one more time. Hands up, pivot. One, two, three, and land. Okay. Swing. So. Uh, the next kick, I know it's not in the first half, but we're still going to talk about it, and that is our butterfly kick. Um, hopefully at second degree, you already know a butterfly kick very, very well, uh, but there's a couple of things that I want you to remember for the butterfly kick, um, and we'll kind of go into the reverse side kick, but not really. Uh, with the butterfly kick, it's important to realize in the beginning, we start in that nice rear stance. A lot of second degree, just like first degrees do, they'll take an extra step with their front leg, in order to get a little bit of extra momentum for the butterfly kick. Don't do that. In first degree, you see first degrees do it a whole lot right here in this form. Before the step forward spin hook, they'll put their heel down, or I'm sorry, that's the correct way. Your ankle. <laughs> that was my ankle, it pops. It's not gonna do it again. But they'll actually take an extra step before that spin hook kick. That's wrong, you don't wanna take that extra step. So same thing, for the butterfly kick, you're here, boom. All you do is you put your ankle down, foot down, and then you step forwards right into that butterfly. Uh, so that's kind of the beginning of it, and then you do the butterfly. And then the, the ending of it is you wanna make sure you don't over rotate. Again, a lot of second degrees after they do the butterfly kick is they'll put their ankle down, they'll do the butterfly kick, and then they're already halfway turned around for the reverse side kick. Again, you don't wanna do that. Just like we talked about with the inside crescent kick, you wanna land in front. So when you do your butterfly, here, ankle goes down, you do your butterfly, boom. And you land in front, so then you get the full rotation for the reverse side kick. Let me fall over. I don't have good balance today. So, but that's a big portion of the butterfly kick. Now. Um, and we talked about the beginning of it and the end of it. Now let's talk about the kick. If y'all are having trouble with the butterfly kick, it's most of the time, it's usually because you're picking up your knee too early. So for instance, if I'm kicking right towards y'all with a butterfly, I wanna make sure the first thing that happens is my back knee picks up and points right to my target. Here, boom, right? That means I'm not rotating with my knee up any time that I don't need to. That was a backwards way of saying that. Let me rephrase. When you're here, I don't want you to pick up your knee over here and then rotate with that around. That's really hard, takes a lot of energy. You don't need to do that. You're making it way harder than it needs to be. Point your knee right at your target and then do the jump. So I'm here, again, I'll slow it down. You turn, point your knee right at your target and jump. Boom. Okay, and again, that's a little bit slower. Once you have it down nice and smooth, again, you turn, knee, jump, boom. So you don't have any extra movement in the air with your knee up, okay? You wanna do the turning with the knee down because it's much, 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 much easier. So there you go. All right, now we're gonna start going through the form from the beginning to the halfway point, And we're gonna talk about a few things we're gonna highlight some of the issues that students sometimes usually have, and we'll go through it. Second degrees, if y'all have any questions, or you want us to talk about something a little more, or answer a question, please comment down on this video, and Senior Master will read it, and she'll give it the question to us, so that we can answer it right here, right now. So, I'll do the beginning, and then Mr. Stair will rock through the um, next part. So, do me. It's the right hand. I had to think about it. <laughs> You're here. Do I need to back up? 
Right there, there, back up, just right there, sir. Thank you. Okay. So, Jimmy, when you first start your form, remember there's no head snaps. You're already looking at your target. So when you're here, your elbow is going to go up. But when your elbow goes up, I don't want to keep my elbow in the middle of my body. Instead, I'm going to go ahead and rotate my shoulders over to the left just a little bit so that I take my elbow and I make it absolutely flat right here. I don't want it angled. I want it flat here. Okay, then when I step out into my middle stance, I start elbow is flat here and I do my two elbow strikes. One, two, and I end with my arm flat here again. What that's doing is that's making sure that I hit my target properly. Um, could you grab something for me to hit? Or your hand? Whatever, okay, yeah, the hand works too. So I'm gonna do it sideways to show y'all a little bit. What I mean by that is if I keep my elbow in the middle, Mr. Stair's hand is my target, and I keep it in the middle, I'm really not getting a whole lot of distance to power my elbow strike up. So if I'm here, I'm barely hitting him there, and then I end, again, with my elbow in the middle, I'm not following through all the way through my target. Just like a punch. If we're punching, I want to start back here so I get the distance, boom, and I power through my target. Same thing with an elbow strike. If I'm elbow striking Mr. Stair's hand, I don't want to start here and then go, there's no power to that, but you get more distance, pow, and you hit your target harder. So what happens, instead of my elbow in the middle, I start my elbow over so I get more power through the target. One, through the target, two. That makes sense? Yes, but I'm going to get behind you. So Yes, ma'am. Okay, one more time. So again, elbow is not in the middle. I start my elbow, shoulders turn. Where my elbow right here, my arm is flat. I go all the way through my target. One, all the way through my target. Two. Okay? Was that better? Yes, sir. Okay, good. good. So again, I know that's a little confusing. It's much easier if y'all are in front of us and we can move you. But again, you want this flat when you start and flat when you end. That's to ensure that you get the full range of the elbow strikes, okay? So then, let's go to the third move now. I've been talking for five minutes. Next move, we're gonna bring our elbow down for a square block. At the same time, I look over, boom. And I do my slow square block. Boom. Then I head snap forwards, pop. I step together, left hand comes across. Again, when I start, I want my elbow flat. I step with my left leg, pop, all the way across. Elbow comes down, look, slow square block. Head snap back, okay? On the slow square block, and again, second degrees, I hope you already know this, but remember, on slow moves, there is not a snap at the end of the technique. So, go back and think about Brown and Red Belt form. First move of that form was a slow knife hand square block. Okay, when you did it, you don't go slow and then go snap at the end. Slow techniques do not have a snap at the end. Same thing for second degrees. You wanna make sure slow stays slow. It does not pop there at the end, okay? So let's go through it one more time. The mystery's just there. We'll go through the next little portion with y'all. So, right leg. I keep forgetting. <laughs> so we're here. Again, I start, elbow comes up. Notice I don't just bring it up, but I bring it up and I turn my shoulders so I get that flat arm. I step over, full range, elbow down, look, slow. Look, head snap. Step together, left arm comes across, flat. Step over, elbows. Arm comes down, look. Slow, no snap. Boop. And then last little move here, look forwards again. So there you go. So that's the first little part. Mr. Shazair is gonna go through that next uh, section with y'all. Sir. Cool, so right after here is where we step into our close stance. Our hands are to, oh, me. Our hands are to our side and we do our block right here. Where someone's grabbing our hair and we're hitting their hand right there, okay? We bring our hands back, twist a little bit so we can get good rotation of power, step out, punch. Okay, I'm sideways, my reaction is back, I don't have a teapot hand. Hand is up, facing out. Downward elbow strike, and circle double knife hand low block. 
Okay, bring both hands back, step back. C block, bring it back, C block, and punch. Okay, let's do that again. So over here, in our close stance, slow. Hands all the way back, twist, step out, punch. Okay, I'm in an X stance. Think about pushing your shin into your calf right here. Fist is facing out, bam, circle, block. Hands come back, step back, one, and two. Make sure you go all the way across right there. It's not just right here. It's big circles because someone's trying to punch you. Okay, uh, so left hand. Wait, no, I messed that up. <laughs> so left hand, right hand, punch, vertical punch right there. And again, my reaction is back. Four times. So close stance, two, three, hands back, twist, step out. One, two, three. Hands come back, C block, C block, hands back, punch. And keep going. That's good. So, so uh, next part of it is the axe kick part. And I know we already talked about the axe kick, so we'll be very brief with that one. Uh, so when you're doing your axe kick again, let it hover, and then control your landing as you come in front. Boom, control. And again, when you land, you want the hand foot timing with the knife hand low block. So you kick, hover, boom. And you do a single knife hand low block here. Hand comes back, single knife hand outer form block. From here, I'm gonna back up so you can see a little bit better. As I take this leg, my left leg a step over, I'm gonna grab my target. Then I bring my right knee up, and I wanna make sure to point my toes. This is called knee protect. So all you're doing is you're pointing your knee and you're putting it close to your other leg here. Not on, you're not relaxing on your leg here, but you're pointing your knee and you're putting it close to your other leg. Not on, that's very important. Um, and I'll stay and I forgot. So again, you land from that axe kick, knife hand out. Then I step over, grab my target, and I come up with my back leg to knee protect, and then I do a something called a arc hand strike. When you're doing this, uh, a lot of students commonly, they'll do a throat grab or a choke. That's not what it is. What I'm doing is I'm actually striking the front of their throat with this part of my hand right here, my index finger, and kind of to the web of my th uh, thumb right here. I'm striking with that part of my hand right up to their neck, okay? So I'm here, I just finished. I step over and grab. I bring my knee up. As I bring it up, I arc hand strike right to the neck, okay? I'm gonna put my knee down for this part because I don't wanna put it up for 10 minutes. The next part is an elbow strike. A lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of students will forget this part and they'll kind of do what first degrees do a little bit. First degrees, in the first degree form, we talked about this yesterday, they do a head grab knee strike and you have a lot of first degrees that go, Wah! and they'll lift up their target, imaginary, and then knee strike them. Obviously that's not plausible, that's not realistic. So what we're doing is second degrees come here and then they'll go, Again, not realistic. That means you're lifting your bad guy up into the air and then slamming them on top of your elbow here. The elbow strike does not happen up here. What's happening is I do my arc hand strike, I'm bringing my elbow forwards and my hand back at the same time to here, okay? Again, it's not this, it's this. I'm bringing my hand to my elbow, okay? Uh, and again, that's more realistic, because again, Mr. Shuster, if I'm beating up Mr. Shuster, uh, I wouldn't do that though. I'm not actually gonna do it either, senior master assistant. Great, so I do my arc hand strike, and again, if this was a real fight, I then would bring my hand to the back of his head, bring his head to my elbow, bow, at the same time. Uh, even though I uh, work out a lot, there's no way that I could lift up Mr. Shuster into the air. Yeah, so working. Great. So let's do the whole line again. And there's one more move after that as well. So uh, we just started. Vertical punch here. Hands come up. Nice axe kick. Let it hover. Boom. Land. Knife hand low block. Single knife hand under form block. As you step this leg over, grab your target. As that knee comes up, arc hand strike. Straight to your elbow. 
here. You want to make sure that strike hand is right over your eyes. What you're not doing is this. <laughs> it looks like you're yawning. And you don't want it on top of your head. You want it right here in front, just enough that you can see underneath. Uh, the way Chief Master taught it to me many years ago is he uh, um, compared it to a hat. Not on your forehead, but you want it about where, what's it called? The part of the hat. The brim. The what? Brim. The brim. The brim of the hat kind of blocks out the sun. That's where your arm kind of is here. Okay? So I'm here. Then for the next move, I'm going to put my leg down. I can't balance today. Whichever hand did the arc hand strike, that hand comes down. Okay? And then I do my slow knife hand side high low block. All right? Again, we already talked about it once, but I'll say it again. Slow moves do not have a pop. They do not have a snap at the end of the technique. Although you might want to do it, it's not it. Slow moves do not have a snap. So again, I'm here, boom, arms get ready. Remember, this hand is doing a knife hand low block, and this hand is doing a knife hand at our form block. So your starting position, obviously, for a knife hand low block is here. And then the other hand, a lot of students will do this for palm down. If you did a palm down starting position, you now have no rotation. Okay? And rotation is especially important on all moves, first off, but it's very, very easily seen on slow moves. If I did a slow move and I did not have my rotation, it is so easy to see. It sticks out like a sore thumb. Let's take the, the twin punch that Mr. Shiste did earlier. He did it correctly again, but this is the way. If I didn't have any rotation, <laughs> it just feels weird. It's wrong and it's so easy to see. You want to make sure that you have the rotation. So when you do that knife hand outer form block, it doesn't start palm down. It starts palm up. So I start my palm up, come out, and I rotate at the end of that move. So again, both hands start palm up with this one here and rotate, okay? Let's, oh, that was the last time. So now we're gonna jump into the next line with Mr. Shister. You can go all the way up to the side punch. Cool. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> funny. Reach all the way back to the left, step into our X stance, and reinforce your form block. This is a reinforced reform block. This is a double letter form block, so sometimes we get that mixed up. This is a reinforced reform block. Well, in the book it says. You're right. The book of knowledge. Of <laughs> the Wanda. sacred text. Yeah. So <laughs> we do our reinforced reform block and we go past our face. We don't go past our face. We're not really blocking anything. They still hit us. So we got to go, bam, across. And then turn our body, back fist, hammer fist. A lot of people go like that. And that's wrong. We need to go one. Yeah. <laughs> so we need to go one, two. Stick both of them. Full circle step back. Double knife and out of form block. Lean back into our back stance. Don't lean forward. Our knee should be over our foot. Hands up. Pivot. Here's our kick we just worked on a second ago. Inside pressing kick. Hover. Lean in front. Turn. Look. Chamber. Foot kick. Round kick. Set our hands. High block. I'm in a back stance. Step back. Down in the palm block. Don't lean over like you're posing or anything. Like this. We, keep, we can lean over a little bit, but not too much. Hand back. Step out. Punch in a middle stance. Okay? Let's do that again. So, reach back, step out. One, two, three. Stick both of those. Full circle. Double knife and out of front block. Hands up. Pivot inside. Press the kick. Hover. Turn look. Chamber. Foot kick. Ground kick. Hands ready. One. Reaction hand back. Two. Don't lean over. Step out. Three. Okay. One more time. And then we'll go on the next line. So here, reach all the way back, step out, one, two, three, both hands out for the circle. See what I just did there? See, I messed that up. Don't go like this. It's not a stop. It's a full circle fast, okay? Because if you stop, you're going to get hit. One, two, three, okay? Hands up, pivot, inside pressing kick, hover, turn, chamber, foot kick, round kick, hands ready, one, two, three. Three. H-E. 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 Right, so we're going to go over the next part of the form. Uh, and again, we've already talked about the front kick and the side kick. 
we got that covered. Uh, again, just making sure you get that nice snap into your sidekick is probably one of the most important parts. Um, but let's talk about that next line. Bless you. Bless you. Great. So uh, we just ended at that side punch right here. Again, when you do that side punch, your eyes you're, are looking at your target. Then I snap back forwards. Pop. My reaction arm is going to stay where it is. My punching hand also stays where it is. So as I step back, my hand stays where it is. Then when I go into my stance, my hand opens up and I do my palm heel block. Side palm heel block. That's the name. So you do your side palm heel block. Uh, when you do that block, you're protecting your abdominal right here. Boom. It's not up top. It's boom here. Okay? In the back stance. Then your reaction arm comes out. Backhand punch. Just like at first degree, when you do that backhand punch, it is super, super common for this knee to go when you do that backhand punch. You want to make sure you keep that back knee over when you do that punch. So again, I do my punch, and then my front hand comes again, upset knife hand strike. And that one is just going to the neck right here, okay? Then from here, all I'm doing is I'm going to close my hand. I do a circle with my hand, and I do a downward knife hand strike. What I'm doing to my bad guy on this one, that's you. Can I beat you up? Yes, sir. Cool. So what I'm doing to my bad guy on this one, I blocked his punch, and then I punched him, pop, and then I hit him in the neck. Boom. Then I'm grabbing his head, I'm bringing it down, boom, and going with my downward knife hand strike right onto the back of the neck. Thank you. Okay. So I'm going to walk the punch, punch him in the gut, hit him in the neck, bring him down, boom, right on top of his, uh, or on, on the back of his neck, right where the top of his spine is. Okay. So one, two, three. As I do that, I take my leg and I step back into an X stance. Again, reaction arm is all the way back. Then right after this move, my hands come up. I pick up my leg, nice front kick. Step back. As you step, pivot your toes. And nice sticky side kick. And then I land into my middle stance. As I land, I want to make sure... <laughs> As I land, I want to make sure I get into that middle stance and I have that hand foot timing. So I do my side kick with my right leg. I reach my arms to my right. I circle up. Double circular low block right here. Remember, it's not open, it's closed, okay? Then from right here, I head snap behind me, and I circle back the opposite way, and I do my circular double knife hand at our form block. Make sure that when you change your stance, it's not this. I'm not picking up my leg and going whoop, because that's wrong, okay? It's a step, it's a stance change. It's not a huge leg up, right? So I'm here. One, look, two. I don't know if you can tell, but I definitely slapped myself in the face when I did that. <laughs> did you see it? No. <laughs> I'm not going to do that again. So, let's do the line one more time. So, I'm right here. I look forwards, step back, hand stays where it is, block. Then I punch, knee stays where it is back here. Upset knife hand, here. Close that hand, circle down, X stance, here, all over. Then hands come up, front kick, step back, pivot, side kick, lay into your middle stance. One, look, change to a back stance, two. There you go. So Mr. Jusera is gonna take you from that point into the halfway point of the form. Yes, sir. Got it, sir. Uh, which, which We're going for the butter block. Don't want that one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We're starting our back stance. Hands up. We already went over the stick. Pivot. Chamber. Round kick. Pivot. Round kick. Pivot. Round kick. Yeah. Land. Round kick. Pivot. Round kick. Pivot. Round kick. Land. Got 17. Down. Double got land. Got 17 at one point. And a smart stance. Okay. Step back. Right hand on top. Watching. Here's our high nine block right here in a rear stance. And then we jump. Turn. Strike, step back again, 
One, two, three. Remember that our left hand, hand that's on top comes on the inside. Okay, kind of like in the first free form, but instead of finishing here, we finish here. Okay, two, two more times. Here, hands up, pivot, chamber, round kick, pivot, round kick, pivot, round kick, land, straight. Step back, right hand up, one, two, three. Right here, jump and bring your knees up. Okay, hand foot timing. Step back again, one, two, three. Okay, one more time. Lean back in my back, same hands up, pivot, chamber, round kick, round kick, round kick, land, roll, bounce, strike, step back, one, two, three, jump, big circle. Make sure you don't do this. Right there, make a big circle. T-Rex arms. Yeah. Okay. T-Rex arms. Okay, left hand up, step back, one, two, four. There you go. So, one small thing about that little part. Um, on that collarbone strike right here. Um, the reason that it's staggered like this is because your opponent would also be in a fighting stance. I see a lot of second degrees make a mistake and they do this. This is wrong. Okay, Mr. Sister. If I'm beating up Mr. Sister again and he's fighting me, he's not standing with his feet together. If, if someone's fighting you like this, obviously they're not very threatened yet. Uh, and that would mean your collarbone strike would go here like this. That's not it. Okay, they're going to be in a fighting stance. So one shoulder is going to be forwards. The other shoulder will be backwards. That's why I have my hands staggered. I'm hitting, is staggered the right word? Staggered. Yes. Staggered. staggered. Um, that's why my hands are like this, because I'm hitting their collarbone. Not straight, because they're not standing with their feet together. They're standing in a fighting stance. So one shoulder is going to be further. That's the reason for that. The other thing with that move that I see a whole lot of second degrees mess up on is as they're doing that circle, they'll go, Oh. And then they'll do that. Do not do that! Just like Mr. Sister talked about with that circular double knife hand block, how you don't stop and then do the block. It's the same thing with the collarbone strike. You're not going and then stopping. I look more powerful, Mr. Osborne. No, you look like you're doing it wrong. That's not correct. You want to make sure it's a constant circle. Okay? So second degrees, if y'all have any questions about any of the moves we did today, please comment right now so that me and Mr. Shuster can answer them and show you anything that you have a question about. If there's a particular move that we didn't cover today or answer a certain question, please comment it right now and me and Mr. Shuster can answer that very quickly. Um, if there are no questions, uh, in the next couple, two or three minutes, we'll go ahead and wrap it up. Remember, next week uh, is our uh, another form seminar. So on next Tuesday at 2.30, We'll be going over the second half of the form. Um, and again, a, a part with the questions, if after this form seminar is over today and you have a question still, you can message me, message Mr. Sister, message Senior Master, and we will make sure to get back to you very quickly and answer that question for you. I know this is a difficult form and it's technical. There's a lot of little things. I love this form. Um, this is a really, really great form. Senior Master loves this form. Uh, I think Mr. Sister loves the third degree form a little bit better. But um, it is a great form. This is one of my favorite forms. Uh, probably my second favorite black belt form. Um, it's a really, really great one. So uh, the difference in first degree and second degree, you got to remember, first degree is all about brute power. That is a very, very powerful form. It's very strong, strong stances. This form has a little bit more flowy techniques in it. You have a lot more circle blocks, a lot more hovering kicks like that. So it requires a lot more control. But it is a really, really great form. So. Can you do the first half all the way through once? Somebody do the first half all the way through once? Yes. <laughs> Who asked it? Me. I ask it. Because I know they're going to.
That is not part of the form. I thought you fell. <laughs> I thought you were falling. So, again, second reason, if you have any questions, please message us, comment on the page, and we will find it and answer it, uh, your question, okay? Um, thank you all for coming out and training with us. They, remember, third degrees, y'all, are tomorrow, Wednesday. I know the schedule we put out when it said Thursday. It is, that's wrong. It's tomorrow at 2.30, okay? That's with Mr. Feliciano and Mrs. Stair. So don't miss that. Uh, they're going to be going through the first half of the third degree form, okay? So thank you all for coming out and training. Thank you, Mr. Stair. Thank you, guys.